Hey, hi everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com. When it comes to students' projects, one of the queries I get from students more than perhaps any others is, uh, oh, you know, I found an outlier, I deleted that outlier, I refitted it, and I found more outliers, and then I deleted that, and then I repeat the process, but I keep finding outliers. When do I stop? Okay. So this then concerns when is an outlier not an outlier. Right. So first of all, how do you go about looking for outliers? You look at something like a, a residual plot. Okay, whatever residuals, let's say it's the standardized residuals. Plus two, minus two. And hopefully most of your dots are, are between there. Also, hopefully, if we that's a this is a residual plot. If we plotted these on the histogram, you can see it's centered around zero. Say zero is here. This is my histogram, and it's going to look if the conditions of assumption are satisfied. It's going to be approximately normal. It's going to be more like t actually, but let's say it's let's just say approximately normal. If we're doing applied work, uh, we'll get away with this. Let's just say approximately normal. Now, recall some facts about the normal distribution. Uh, when I say approximately normal, I'm saying approximately normal with mean of zero and a variance of one. All right. Recall that when we looked at normal distribution, plus or minus two times the standard deviation from the mean, which is zero, standard deviation will be 1 as well, so in other words plus 2 that way, minus 2 that way, do you remember what the area under this curve should come up to? Yeah, it should come up to 95 percent, alright? What does that mean? It means that if I have 100 residuals and they come from a no normal distribution, you expect 95 of those between plus and minus 2, plus and minus 2 on a residual plot. But if you look outside here, there is a chance also, even if it's from a normal distribution, that they could lie outside plus and minus two, and there's a five percent chance. All right. So in other words, when you see something which is slightly over two, like here, you don't. I mean, students tend to, and uh, understandably so, uh, look at that and say, "Um, that's an outlier, isn't it?" Okay. But I'm sure you, if you look at this dot compared to this dot, and ask you which of those two are definitely an outlier, you'd say this dot because it's further away from zero than this one. So looking at the standard normal table we can say that even though there's a five percent chance, a two and a half percent chance that it's larger than two, a two and a half percent chance that the residual standardized residual is less than minus two, it doesn't mean that if I have a residual say equal to ten way over here that that is allowable because we say it falls into two and a half percent range, we should consider the intervals. So here's something I looked up earlier. The probability that standardized residual takes value greater than three is about 0.135 percent, extremely small. So in other words, if your residual is bigger than or equal to three or less than minus three, then that is a very small chance of that happening. the chance that it should fall between the interval, your residual, standardized residual, notice I'm saying standardized each time because that forces it to be normal of zero, mean of zero and variance of one, that the standardized residual falls between two and a half plus two and a half and less than three is approximately 0.486 percent and the chance that it falls between two, z between two and two point five comes out to be one point six five four percent. So what this means is that if I have a hundred residuals and they come from a normal distribution, you would expect about say one and a half, say one to two can lie between two and two point five. So if this was two point five here and I have hundred dots, then I look at this and I say, well, you know, um, it's possible. So you wouldn't count this immediately as an outlier. 
Whereas if you look at this and say that this was 5, well, that's beyond 3. And if there are 100 dots here, you, don't, you wouldn't expect even one case. All right. So then you would say, oh, that is an outlier. So that's the first thing. So when we're looking at the standardized or indeed the studentized residual plots, we should be bearing this in mind. That we can allow for dots slightly below negative 2 or above positive 2 but bear this interval in mind. Now when I'm going through this some of you would say hmm surely it's numbers 1.96 well you'd be right it's figures actually if we're actually going to be accurate to two decimal places 1.96 but you know most kind of intro courses will say rule of thumb plus or minus 2 since we're approximating this normal anyway. Yeah but the rule is that if it's plus or minus 1.96 it's more closer to 95% if the thing is actually normal. Because that's the first point. When is an outlier not an outlier? Next, when is an outlier not an outlier? Is when it's a good leverage point. To illustrate this, here's a bivariate regression, regression y on x. Consider these points here. These points are very similar, typical of data. This one is far away from the others, isn't it? And some people might say then, well, isn't it an outlier? It's far from the main bunch of dots. Well, it isn't because it lies on the line. So if I was to take that line, take that dot out and draw the line, your line might look something like this. Putting that dot in ain't going to affect it, is it? And such a thing wouldn't show up then on the residual plot anyway. But if you were to look at a scatter plot, because remember that's one of the first things you do before you do a, fit a uh, simple linear regression, look at a scatter plot and you can see such uh, a point that is a good leverage point, it ain't an outlier. And if you want to know more difference between uh, good, bad leverage points and outliers, I've just made a video of that as well. Right, third on my list and finally I'm going to discuss when is an outlier not an outlier. Well bit more technical I guess. Um, I, would help, I think you'd agree that an outlier for one model may not be an outlier for another model. So let's consider bivariate regression. So I've just got one y, uh, or dependent variable, one independent variable. If we fit this model we might find some outliers. It may be different to the outliers that appears when I fit say a regression with now two independent variables as opposed to one, which might be different if we have, say, the outliers that would appear from a model like this, where I transform the dependent variable, the x's, or just one of, just transform one of them. So the outliers are with respect to your model. Now when we talk about outliers, we yeah, it's respect to a particular model. And we hope that, that you've picked a correct model. If you've picked a correct model, then the outlier that appears is a true outlier, isn't it? But if you find if you've actually fitted a wrong specified model, uh, you fitted this model when it should be more like this, then the outlier that comes for this model is for the wrong model. And so if you delete it, um, it ain't gonna kind of lead you to the correct model is it, it's going to take you down a cul-de-sac. So the thing to point out here is that this outlier is specific to your model and assumes that you've got a true correct model. If you've misspecified it uh, massively, if it's massively wrong, then those outliers ain't true outliers, although they are outliers with respect to your model, which is a wrong model. So how can we see that whether we've, um, we're, we've got this kind of case? Well, Say you've got a really a wrongly specified model and you don't know it's wrongly specified. You take you find an outlier, you take that outlier out and you refit the model. And it, but if, when you refit the model, you still you find that the coefficients, the estimated coefficients, doesn't make sense. For example, it's a negative sign where you expect it to be a positive sign. That should suggest to you that you perhaps got a wrong functional form. Either you've you, you sh should transform your variables or you've omitted something on the in terms of the x's. Right, so I've given you three things. 
Um, this case, I hardly see any students discuss this case. Um, the leverage versus outlier debate uh, versus outliers I've I've discussed. Um, first one, first case where the students just find outliers, remove them, and repeat and repeat and repeat, never-ending cycle until they've hardly got any data points left. <laughs> that that uh, that is the most common thing that students do. Um, but um, yeah, bear in mind all these three things. If I've missed any other cases out, let me know. But nothing, uh, not uh, not these are the only three things that kind of appear in my head when I think about when is an outlier not an outlier.